Long layoff while they sorted out a new recording deal, the band are off to Los Angeles to work on their next album. During the break, the members of the band got into various solo projects. We featured Marty Wilson Piper a few weeks ago, playing songs from his solo album In Reflection. Now Steve Kilby has written and published his own book, a collection of prose poetry called Earthed, and released an album with the same name. That's his second solo LP. here unexplained I can't believe the chance you took I can't believe you're back again Sister coming from the rain Those images are fading now You shouldn't bring them back again In the earth of the time In a bargain basement you were recognized Then from time to time Much to my amazement Reach into an episode Your elegance it really showed Blossom into view The landscapes change And people blur I can't believe this Interests you I read that bedtime Interview I wish they wouldn't print Those things It only makes it hard for me. In the earth of time In a bargain basement you were recognized Then from time to time Much to my amazement With each ensuing episode Your elegance it really shows Steve, I'm glad we had this opportunity to uh, sort of catch up with what you're doing before the church revives itself. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year you released the Earthed album and now we have the book Earthed. Well, is there a connection between the two? Um, possibly referring to the Unearthed album and then there's the Earthed album and the Earth book. Um, there's, no, I just, like the, um, I just like the play on words between Unearthed and Earthed and sort of the tangential kind of opposite meaning that they have. Um, I guess it's, it's just sort of a bit confusing. I, I sometimes enjoy confusing people. But the Earth album, mm. um, is that meant to be a companion to the book? Definitely. The, the Earth album, which just came out last week, is a, um, an actual a soundtrack for the book. It's sort of an accessory to the book. Like, in my mind, the book is the most important thing, and then if you enjoy the book, you can sort of... Um, as one wag put it, you can uh, read the record and listen to the book. How did the book come around? They, they told me that you're um, the first sort of famous Australian pop musician to uh, <laughs> put out a book. How did you get round to um, deciding to write and publish it? Um, well, I've always felt that sort of song lyrics are a bit confining for what some of the things I've wanted to express and uh, I just thought, to hell with it, you know, I'll pay for it myself and put it out. And so I just sat down at home and wrote it. And then um, um, a colleague of mine put me in touch with the kind of people who could typeset it and, you know, decide how thick the cover should be and all those things I hadn't really thought about. And it was quite an easy thing to do, really. The style you use is prose poetry, yeah. which, um, in a way, for people who don't read a lot of poetry, mm. is more accessible. Definitely. Not a very common style, though. Why did you choose that? Um, to me, prose poetry gives the best of both worlds. Um, I think poetry has a certain... Just the look of it, the way it's written in verses, puts people off a bit. And um, prose itself tends to just be like an essay. So I, I like the, the, 
the actual layout of prose where you just use sentences rather than verses but um, being able to use the stylistic sort of jumps that a poet can use you know it's a poetic license so you can jump all over the place within within a paragraph rather within a verse and you do I do yeah yeah I found it a really easy to read book and quite entertaining a lot of it yeah um, how different is it from writing songs it's totally different because if you've got a song you know it's got you know the song's gonna be three minutes long and you know it's got to have meter and it's probably got a rhyme it's got to have a verse and a chorus and a refrain and a middle eight and a bridge and um, with a, with writing this book I just sat down with a piece of paper in front of me and just could be as long as I liked, short as I like. Um, you know, you can broach any subjects you like. You can swear or talk about sort of things that you probably can't get into. You, know, you don't have to think, oh, are they going to play this on the radio or is, you know, someone in the record company not going to like this. You can just do whatever you like. Well, I guess to some extent you can do what you like with music too. I mean, music has its free forms and songs, there's no real reason why songs can't also be as free form as poetry? Um, I guess not. I won't argue with that. There's no <laughs> reason, but it just tends to be like um, rock music does have a certain kind of, um, there are stylistic boundaries you have to work within. Like even you, you get your most hardcore punk band and the words rhyme, you know? They ha have a tr hard job finding a word to rhyme with anarchy a lot of the time but n nonetheless they, it does have to rhyme and it does have to have a certain beat you know whereas with with what I did with this book it, it could just be you know one sentence long or it could be three pages long it could just do anything it liked and you you never have to come back to this recurring theme which songs are supposed to have something that tie them all together what do you find more satisfying this solo work you've been doing or your work with the church um, I, I really like doing things on my own. Um, it's, it's a bit like the difference between playing football and playing tennis. You know, it's nice to have the other chaps there to pass the ball to and sort of help you score the goals. On the, on the other hand, it's good to sort of know that, you know, everything you're doing is sort of resting on your own shoulders. It'd be really hard to write a book with the rest of the band because you'd all be holding the pen saying, do you mind if I put a comma in here, Richard? You know what I mean? Whereas when you're on your own, you just do whatever you like. You don't don't have to verbalise your ideas. I find that by the time I've finished verbalising an idea to, say, someone else in the band or an engineer or a producer or whoever's involved, it's sort of, um, the fact has sagged through constant analysis and I'm already tired of it. When you do things on your own, you can just go straight from your brain to your left hand and do it. And that's what I like. Mm. In the beginning of your book, you sort of suggest that poetry is a purer form, somehow incorruptible because there's no money involved. Exactly. Pretty different to the music business. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's probably the, the art form that does have the least money involved. You know, there's, there's no top 100 billboard of poets, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, there's, there's no cocaine and glamour associated with it. It's just the people write it for the love of it and people read it for the love of it. And uh, as I said in the book, there's, apart from the, the stylistic tricks that you have up your sleeve, there's no, no way you can enhance your poetry. There's no, you know, you can't electronically process it to make it better poetry. So that's what I really like about it. It's, it's, to me, it's probably the most pure art form there is. You've had quite a break with the church and you, all the members have gone off and done mm. your own things. Yeah. Are you going to go back together and have a different approach, do you think, because you've had a chance to explore all these other avenues? Um, it could work either way. I mean, it could be like, oh, we get back together and every, everybody's got something off their chest, or it could, you know, we could get back together and sort of people could say, I, you know, I liked it better on my own when I did this. Um, I think we're all sort of big and ugly enough to kind of work with each other and sort of grudgingly accept that each one sort of performs a function that the other one can't do. Um, I don't think there's going to be any friction over these projects. But what about you after having a chance to do all these other things? Um, are you going back with a different state of mind? Um, not really, no. I, I regard that... I, I, see, I see it as the church as something that I do and these other things are me, not that the church is my main thing and then 
occasionally, you know, I get a note from my mum and I can go out and do something on my own. So I, no, I just go back and approach the church as the church, you know, which is it's something that's sort of, it's greater than the sum total of its parts. You're certainly a very prolific writer, both of songs and other material. Yeah. Um, I believe that you um, have a lot of material that hasn't quite seen the light of day yet. Yeah, um, I'm threatening um, to release a triple or quadruple album of all the rest. Just get it all out in one go. All the, like I must have 60 or 70 songs at home, which unearthed is, the first album was the tip of that iceberg. And like that one's, that one's been around, unearthed's been around for a long time, still selling well, so I've sort of, figured, you know, if people like that, then I might as well get all the rest of it out of my system once and for all, because the stuff sitting at home on a tape, which I think is as good as anything else I've done, and deserves to be heard. The oceans are dry Children stop crying, we're trying, we're dying to leave this island to you. No recovery, each day's a terrible discovery, under the wind they cover me. Something that means something Why do you want me to want? I don't have a clue Do you? A bribe from Venus I know she's above and between us She's been with us, seen with us Dreamed of us too No recovery And all these sins don't bother me Under the skin of